We're also going to look at the book of Luke. Look at the last chapter of the book of Luke. The last chapter of the book of Luke. It's important to understand that when Jesus Christ, he resurrected in his sinless body, you're going to find out something. He actually had no blood. We're going to look at Luke 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Luke chapter 24. And then we're going to read verse 39. You know why the resurrected Savior, he has no blood? When he raised himself from the dead, he has no blood. You might say, why is that? It's because he already shed every last drop of his blood on the cross. So in his resurrected body, he actually has no blood. Because look at the wording right here. Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not what? Flesh and bones as ye see me have. That's really important to note. The Bible says right here that Jesus Christ, in his resurrected body, is flesh and bones. Now, what's the famous phrase when you're referring to human beings? It will be flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. Why is it flesh and bones? That's such a strange wording. You never hear this phrase quite, quite often. It's more flesh and blood. For example, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You might say, well, no. Well, look at 1 Corinthians 15. Didn't you know that our resurrected body has no flesh and blood? That's what you're going to find out. You're not going to have your same corruptible flesh and you have no blood. Over here, you have an incorruptible flesh and bones. If you don't believe me, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That Bible will show you so many enlightening things that people just don't pay attention to and read. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 50, now this I say, brethren, that what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because that's corruption, and God can't allow corruption into heaven. Keep reading. Neither doth corruption. See that? It refers to flesh and blood as corruption. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Why do you think people had to get saved in the Old Testament by innocent blood of the animals? Why do you think that Jesus Christ had to shed sinless blood to get us to heaven? Why do you think that human blood sacrifice was an abomination to God? See that? It makes sense. Everything clicks. Because in this passage, the Bible says flesh and blood is considered corruptible to God. That's why flesh and blood, you must understand, is not allowed in heaven. When we have our resurrected body, our flesh is going to be transformed into incorruption, and we have no blood. It's going to be bones. But this phrase is also interesting because when you think about mankind, when he was created without sin, it was flesh and bones. Look at the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. That book, man, is amazing. People don't pay attention to what they're reading. People don't study the Bible. That book will show you so many incredible things that you never thought would be in your Bible. All people do is just give little ditty devotionals and some verses, and that's it. And when you do that, then you don't see the enlightening treasures of God's Word. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 2. And notice what the Bible described, the sinless, and I mean the sinless state of man. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, and we'll read verse 23. And Adam said, this is now, what? Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Notice right here, it's not flesh and bones, the sinless state. Adam and Eve had sinless bodies. And Adam and Eve in their sinless bodies, what was it? It was flesh and bones, not flesh and blood. How about that? So it shows right here in our resurrected body, because the Bible says you will have the same body like Jesus Christ when you get resurrected at Philippians chapter 3 and 1 John chapter 2. So when we have the resurrected body of Jesus Christ, we're going to be flesh and bones, 
blood is not allowed because it's corruptible, our old flesh is going to be changed, and the sinless state of Adam and Eve was also like that. But this also brings up interesting points right here. Then if it wasn't blood, what was flowing in their veins? Well, well, look at 1 John, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. This is interesting. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Think about this, church. Jesus Christ, he had to spend every last drop of his blood, right? Correct. In fact, how we do know he spent every last drop of his blood is because water even gushed out. That's important. So this is important to understand. In, within your body, your circulation system, it's not just blood, it consists of water. If Jesus Christ spent every last drop of his blood and there's no blood, then what's left over? It's water. So you know what? It's a water circulation system. Crazy. Look at the book of 1 John chapter 5. You got to realize if it's not blood, then what's left? It's water. Look at 1 John chapter 5. Notice what we were born with. 1 John chapter 5. And we're going to read verse 8. Well, verse 7 by context. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. See the Trinity, right? And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Look at that. As representative of the Trinity, Spirit, water, and blood. Look at that. So you'll notice right here, there's no problem. We obviously know there's spiritual power flowing within us. We also know there's blood within us, but then what's left over? It's water. Now look at the verse previous behind it. We're going to look at verse 6. This is he that came by what? Water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only. See, look at that emphasis. Not by water only. Recognizing that there is just a water only system. Jesus Christ, he didn't just come by a water-only system. Why? Because he had to spend the blood. Keep reading right here. But by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So you'll notice right here at verse 6, there is a recognition of a water-only system. This is very interesting. Now look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. So remember, Jesus Christ, he came by water and blood. And because he spent all of his blood, what's left over? It's water. That's why the Bible says when the blood ended, when the blood was all spent, the leftover part water gushed out at the book of John 19. But look at John chapter 3, how we were all born. We're all born with this. Look at John chapter 3. And we will read verse 5. John chapter 3 and verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of what? Water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Isn't that interesting? In order to enter God's kingdom, wow, you have to have what? Water as well. Water as well to enter God's kingdom. That's why we all will have a water system when we enter God's kingdom. Now the thing is this, is that this verse is famously used to show that the first birth born of water, a lot of people misconstrue it and mistake it as water baptism. That's not true. This is actually talking about your physical birth, what we were all born with. That's why when you were born, what do the doctors say about the pregnant mother who gave birth? Water broke, see? Everyone knows that we're all born by water. That's your birth. See, we all came from water, and you have to have that with you when you go to heaven, a water birth. What's also interesting is that if this is the system that God allows in heaven, in our sinless state. And not only that, if Jesus Christ in his resurrected body had flesh and bones, but also by water, what did Adam and Eve most likely have if they have the similar flesh and bones? They also had a water circulation system as well. Interesting. But that's why it's interesting when sin came upon the earth, that's when we all came by blood and God forbade drinking human blood because blood is corruptible in his eyes.
fascinating. Fascinating. That's why when you talk about celestial creatures and alien beings, 1 Corinthians 15 says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you got to understand this. All the angels, when they followed Satan, those celestial bodies originally, what did they have? They had no blood. Celestial angels, they don't have any blood. So when you see these weird things in outer space about celestial creatures, a.k.a. aliens, a lot of wild stuff, what, do they famous, what are they famously known for sometimes? Blue-blooded aliens. Blue-blooded aliens. Crazy, wild stuff. All these things that people came up, and if any of those things are true, any of them are true, the Bible already predicted and told you a long time ago. Water circulation system. Crazy stuff.